And that's totally fine. You want to get to a point where probably two out of three times you can respect your trading rules and give yourself also give yourself some room to screw up. I don't think it would be very realistic to expect from yourself to trade always perfect. Okay, so Ralph, welcome back on the podcast. It's been a long time we had you here. Good to have you again. And uh, tell me about kind of what's been going on since we last spoke. It's been a few years. Uh, good to be back. Yeah, it's been I think like two or three years. Last time we met in Thailand. Uh, yeah, lots have changed. I'm in Germany now. Once again, back for good this time, I guess. Uh, settled in very nicely and yeah, very happy to be back. Awesome. Tell me a bit more about trading. It's been a while for sure. Um, we had a few events in the market, but tell me about how trading's been going for you. Um, yeah, I think it has been a, a pretty wild ride lately. There's a lot of volatility, then there's a lot of calmness, especially in the FX market. Um, I think it needs some adjustments. What I've been doing is jumping around time frames. So when there's no long term momentum, I'm more on the lower time frames. If I see good setups, then um, I'm on a higher time frame. So it really always depends on the situation. I'm avoiding JPY pairs because of all the rumors and the interest rates and all of those things. But overall, it's been good. I'm transitioning more and more into into stocks as well, which has been a, a fun journey as well. Tell me why GPY pairs, why are you avoiding them? It seems like there's been a pretty good trend going on for Japanese in the past few months. Uh, yeah, there has been a few good moves, but um, there are always those rumors around what the BOJ is going to do. And I've been around quite a few interventions and I've seen a lot of traders got hit pretty hard. So I prefer to be on the, on the cautious side. Um, avoid them, not risk any black swan events. They tend to come out of nowhere with the BOJ, but um, yeah, I, I still do trade. I'm, I'm back now. There, were, It was more like two, three, four weeks ago when I decided to avoid them. Um, I'm back with JPY now, just reduced my risk to, uh, on them to adjust for all the potential uncertainty that is coming with it. For sure, you've been using a journal for many years. You've co-founded a, a really successful journal out there for traders. And people seem, seem to have an issue. Like It's always the same issue with journaling. They seem to have a tough time to know what to journal, first of all. And then they seem to have a tough time to stick to it. So what do you see as some of the reasons why people need to have a journal when they, when they trade? Most traders, when they don't have a journal, they are trading mostly based on guesswork. So they don't really have a concrete idea of what is working, what isn't working and which direction to go. And what I have seen, because lately I've uh, restarted journal reviews so the our Edron customers can send me their journals and I will just do a deep dive into them. And what I've been seeing a lot lately is that traders, they have a good track record. They might even make some money, but they don't even know what is working for them. And what I've seen, especially in two or three instances, is that the traders have a very good edge, actually. Their trading strategy is working, but then you look at the trades that are outside of their edge, which means that when they broke the entry rules, they took random entries, they mismanaged the trade, uh, that's when they lose a lot of money. And that to see that actually is can be a real eye-opener for them. And a lot of, of our users have told me that this is been such an important revelation once they see okay my strategy is actually working the strategy is working fine when i listen to the rules but when i deviate and i trade outside of the rules that's where the problem starts so that's i think such a big big uh, insight that you can have into your into your trading and can help you give confidence move forward that's a good point for sure uh, a lot of people have rules you say they, they don't follow the rules what can they do from this to kind of make sure they follow the rules because I feel like having a journal brings more accountability. Like you don't want to put a bad trade in your journal necessarily. Does that is that the only solution? Or do you feel like they can do something else to stick to their plan better and avoid these bad trades? I think in the beginning it's quite normal that you have those bad trades. It just it's part of the game when you're starting or learning a new strategy. Then um, getting to learn all the rules and when to apply the trades and when to get into the trades. That's just part of the learning process, but then over time, as you re uh, revisit your trades in the journal and you just go through them one by one, it's going to be, uh, you're going to see very quickly that you can make money if you just follow the rules, but if you don't follow the rules, that's where you lose money. And over time, this will help you understand 
that waiting actually for the good trades to come around and then between those good trades not to not to mess up that's really the key and that's where going back to your journal is really the key and i think there's no real replacement for the traders who don't look at their past trades it's it's very hard not to say impossible to actually get on the right track because they don't really know what is working and what isn't working so and then over time uh you can just develop a more consistent routine and then avoid more and more of the bad trades. What are some of your favorite features or functions of a journal? Like, of course, you can track your trades, you can review them, but what are the things you think are useful for traders to have in a journal? So the qualitative data is, uh, or the quantitative data is very important, obviously. Uh, your reward-to-risk ratio, your performance metrics, uh, our multiples, and all of those things are quite important. But if, and that's what we do in Edgewonk, is we match the qualitative side, so how well do you execute your trades, how well are you able to follow the rules, we match the qualitative and the quantitative side uh, and then really show them on a performance-based level, okay, when you're breaking your rules, this is exactly how much money you are losing. Another very important thing is that traders often mismanage their trade. So even if you take a good trade, once you're in a trade, because traders spend all of the time just learning and trying to perfect the entry method, but once they're in the trade, they're lacking the understanding of what they should do. They exit their winners too soon because they are scared of giving back profits and they lost, let their losses run a little bit too long. And we also have an analysis on that so we can exactly tell or show them how much money they're leaving on the table. Just last week, I did a review for another Edgewonk user. And what we have is what we call potential performance. So if you don't mess with your trades, you just set your stop, your target, and then you let the market play out. The potential performance for this trader could have been much higher, but he's always fiddling with the trades, closing the winners too early. And that can be such an important insight when you understand, okay, I actually just have to trust the system, trust the process, and the market do whatever the market will do anyway. And if you see that actually in your performance with the real hard data, that can help traders lead to a, a behavior shift. And that's ultimately where you need to go with, the, with your trading. The data leads and then the performance um, has to follow. That's a good point. M most people hate to have their trades turn into losers. They close them really fast as, as they can when they're in profit. Like you said, it's kind of being able to go back on that data and seeing what happens when you not do it. Like what's the difference, what's the difference? that makes a, a huge improvement for sure. Yeah, and I do the the data tracking. I'm a, I'm a huge data nerd, which might not be surprising since I founded Edgewonk. So when it comes to business, what we do with Edgewonk Trade Society, we track everything, but also... Uh, with my running, I just completed a, uh, a half marathon. I'm about to do a, a trail run in Austria in four, three weeks. And I track pretty much everything. What are my workouts? What is my pulse? What do I eat leading up to my races? How much sleep do I get? And those are just so important um, insights. It doesn't take long. It's not a huge effort. And the insights you get are just so helpful because you can often reduce the time and the effort actually that is needed to train or to prepare your trading when you focus on the right things. And that's just so helpful. You can just optimize pretty much everything about your, your approach. If you had to pick a few key metrics people have to fo re really follow and keep track on for trading, what would these key metrics be? So we just talk about uh, the quantitative side, just when you talk about hard numbers. Um, reward to risk ratio is very important. On its own, it's not really helpful, but in combination, when you look at it, for example, there are multiple because the reward-to-risk ratio is the metric that you have when you enter a trade, right? So you have your stop loss, your target, and that's your reward-to-risk potential. But then you look at the outcome of the trade. Um, was it a winning trade and how big was the winning trade? And that can tell you a lot. If you cut your winners short, you will see it immediately in your reward in your R multiple. If you're shooting always for a three-to-one reward-to-risk ratio, but then you see your average R multiple on your winners is only two. Where, where's the, the last part on your, on your winners? Are you cutting them too short? And is there a reason? Should you cut them too short maybe? Because, or should you cut them short because your target is too aggressive and the price doesn't, doesn't make it that far? Then you could adjust your, your target placement. So our multiple reward risk ratio in combination, but there's another thing that we have is called efficiency, which is a little bit more where we bring in the, the, quant, the, the qualitative. And I think the qualitative side is so important to get traders into the, the, uh, the process mindset. And efficiency in Edgewonk measures how well are you able to follow your trading plan. So if you have an efficiency of around 50%, it means that 
On 50% of your trading decisions, you're breaking your rules and you're only able to follow 50%. So generally in the beginning, you will have a low um, efficiency, which is normal and it's totally fine. Over time, you want to see an, an improvement and an uptrending efficiency graph that shows that you're actually improving your level of execution and the ability to follow your trading rules. Those are quite important. And then, as I said, the trade management potential performance is just so helpful as well. And those are really the keys. In the beginning, and I have reviewed hundreds and hundreds of trade journals, and the majority of traders, if you just look at the trade management, are you cutting your losses too late, your winners too early, are you breaking your rules, I would say 70 or 80% out of the traders, just by focusing on those two aspects of their trading, would see already a huge improvement. And then later you can get into the nitty gritty. We have all the very advanced data, but that's, I think, trying to run before you can even walk. So focus on the foundation, build a very rock solid foundation, and then try to get the last 10, 20% out of your strategy with the advanced data points. What's a good target for efficiency? I usually call this compliance, but same principle as you mentioned, efficiency. What's a good target? Do you want to get to 100 or can you actually be okay with less than that? I think 100% is not, well, maybe achievable, but it's not, it's not necessary. I have seen very good trading journals with a very stellar trading performance of a trading efficiency of 70 to 80%. Uh, I rarely see efficiencies higher than 80%. And that's totally fine. You want to get to a point where probably two out of three times you can respect your trading rules and give yourself also give yourself some room to screw up. I don't think it would be very realistic to um, expect from yourself to trade always perfect. If you have this goal of trading with a 100% efficiency, I think this sets you up for failure because as soon as you have just one mistake, then all the good intentions will often go out the window. Um, I got into running and all of that very seriously lately. And also, if you hold yourself to a standard that is just so high and unrealistic, then just slipping at once can lead to this cascade of further slip-ups. So give yourself some room to um, mess up every now and then, totally fine. Just make sure that on the next trade, you get back on track. If you feel very ir irritated, take the day off and do something else and then get your mind back. There will always be, I know it's cliche, but it's actually the truth. Tomorrow will be another trade, there will be another day. But make sure that you can come back with a fresh mind. You haven't blown your account or dug yourself such a big hole that it takes days or weeks to get out of that. I mean, that, that's just a good perspective too. People might expect you got to be like, you always say, oh, you got to follow your plan all the time. You got to respect your rules. And that's very true. But you mentioned you don't have to be like all the time perfect with it. And that's good. I think it sets some perspective and some like people won't have to necessarily have the best performance or the best efficiency to succeed. It's important to aim high, but you don't have to get like so high of a number. So it's good you mentioned that. Yeah, on average, you want to just do good trades and you will very quickly see that uh, you do most of the time you take good trades or you have a good habit of journaling, planning your trades, reviewing your trades. That will lead to a much better place in your trading without holding yourself to a standard that just cannot be uh, accepted or achieved realistically. One of the things I see is people start with the journal, they track their trades and they get like 20 trades and they see their, what their stats are and then they modify everything based on these like 20 trades. What's a good number of trades to get in the journal to be able to make good decisions on your metrics and how you should trade? So I just recently wrote actually about this on our blog about the, the importance of sample size thinking. Um, a lot of traders even do it well before that. They look at their last trade, and that mostly happens when you don't have a journal. You just like your, look at your last trade and you see, oh, I could have done this differently. If I have used another indicator with a different setting, I could have made um, double or triple this, the amount of money. And then they will immediately adjust and change their strategy. But then it's overfitted um, for the very specific condition of the market. And then as soon as the market uh, is just behaving slightly different, everything falls apart. I would say at least get 30 trades into your journal to get a, a good idea of what is going on. It also depends a little bit on the market cycles. You want to have data across different market cycles that can also improve the robustness of your results. But sticking in the beginning with a simple approach, 30 trades, the more the better, 40 trades would be even better before you take any serious adjustments. And what is really important when it comes to making adjustments is that you make one adjustment at a time. 
you don't want to change two or three things at once because then if it leads to a better uh, performance, you don't really know what is actually what has what has helped your uh, what has helped a better performance. And also conversely, on the other side, if your performance gets worse, what is actually the thing that you changed and that led to the worst performance? So make one change over time and see how it uh, how it impacts your performance. I've talked about this in the past of making this at the end of a week or at the end of a trading month. You pick one thing that you identified in your trading that you're not really uh, super satisfied with and that for the next few trading days you just focus on that one thing that you want to improve and usually you should start with the the outliers what is costing me the most of uh, most amount of money where's my biggest performance leak what did i do exceptionally bad last week and focusing on improving those very big issues first is going to make such a huge difference and one thing at a time, and if you do this for a year, you will have focused on so many different aspects and probably made huge progress as well in your performance and in your trading. I think pretty recently you revamped the whole Edge one. So it's a whole new interface on your training journal that you have. Uh, that's, I think, pretty well done, pretty cool. What was the reason behind that kind of new interface? What do you want to make it uh, better? So Edge Wonk is now turning 10 years in, uh, in March next year. And over the years, we have always just kept improving, kept improving. We invest so much money into just making it always better. And we felt it was time to update our our look. Um, we felt that the, the layout, it was not bad, but it just looked a little bit aged. And uh, we consulted some user experience professionals, uh, design ex uh, professionals, and we just talked through how can we make the journaling experience very efficient. We want to make journaling very easy, very simple for the user, and also give them just a great journal that they look forward to to coming back because that's the key. If they really like to spend time in the journal, then they are more likely to to use it, and then they will get the most out of it. So yeah, we're always working on it. We have a we have grown our team, and we are always investing into into Edgewong and trying to make it better. Definitely, you wanted the leaders out there for sure with journaling on for traders for sure. Tell me where people can find it and connect more about kind of what you do and see see Hedgewalk in, in practice. So I think to see Hedgewalk in practice right now, the best way is just to go to our YouTube channel, youtubecom slash edgewonk, and then you will see the last six videos are just reviews where uh, our customers can send me their journal, and I will take a deep dive. I will go through all of the metrics, and I really try to hone in and try to see what is going on with this user's data, with this trading behavior, with the performance, and then I provide or try to provide a very clear path forward, what the user should focus on, what are the main issues for the trader, what are his strengths, so that he can double down on the strength. And I think that's a very good way of just seeing the power of Edgewonk and seeing some really interesting journals from users. And I've seen and I've reviewed so many different kinds of traders from a, a consistently losing trader to a consistently winning trader, a break-even trader. And it's just always interesting to see where different traders are and what are the issues and how can they move forward. I'll put the link below for your YouTube and your website. We're going to check it out directly. Uh, so all links will be there for people to reach you directly. Um, if you had to summarize this to, to saying a few things that differentiates the traders who lose money versus the one who win money, what would be the, the main differences? Either in terms of like journaling or maybe the habit, maybe something else. What is different there? I think the big thing is just the consistency that I've seen. Uh, we have traders who have hundreds of trades in their journals, very well-maintained journals, and you can often see a very nice progression of their performance because they really spend the time with their, with their trades. And we made Edgewonk in a way that's super easy to get your trades into Edgewonk. Uh, we have we connect with hundreds of brokers, um, dozens of platforms. You can very easily import your trades with just a few clicks. And the consistency is really that stands out, not in trading, but anything else that you do in trading, you just put in the time and the consistency every day or every other day, just 30 minutes, 20 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever you can spare, that will, that will help you. And I think that's the really big differentiator consistency and then over time just sticking with it awesome thanks all for your time and, you, and your answers here to my questions on journaling i think that's been pretty useful talking to somebody out of this and uh, hopefully you catch you soon and, and discuss more trading that'd be cool cool anytime and very happy to be here thanks for the invitation